I actually have three causes for my hair breakage and thinning hair and some hair loss. One of them is COVID, which we're gonna be talking about extensively. And I know that's affecting a lot of people. Estimates are like over 20% of people probably who have had COVID. My story uh, with thinning hair and some hair loss and hair breakage um, in relation to my COVID-19 started, I think, in January. Dr. Jen has some personal news that she has asked us to share with all of you. She has tested positive for COVID-19. January 11th, I tested positive for COVID-19. This was after having been fully vaccinated and boosted. Now that it's just over three months, roughly uh, later, is really when I started to notice a major change. The two things that I noticed were loss of volume, really, really like almost nothing for me to, you know, hold on to when I put my hair up in a ponytail and then breakage. Okay, so let's talk about what we know in the world of dermatology and medicine about COVID-19 related hair loss. There's a difference with the way COVID-19 seems to be impacting uh, the hair follicle difference from other acute illnesses. There are three phases of hair growth or that every hair follicle on your head uh, is in either one of these phases. Uh, it's called antigen, catagen, or telogen. Basically, antigen is the growth phase, telogen is the falling out phase, uh, catagen is kind of the resting phase. When people get COVID-19 related hair loss, they're getting dysfunction in that antigen phase. The telogen loss, which is what we see in other things like preg after pregnancy, is about 25% of the hair loss seen in people who have had COVID-19. Now, why is this important? According to the life cycle of a hair follicle, this is relevant because it affects when, what the timeline is by which someone could start to notice hair loss following COVID-19. Hair loss after COVID can begin as early as 18 to 47 days after infection. That's compared to telogen effluvium, which typically takes three to six months. Don't know yet who is more at risk. It does appear that if you've had more severe COVID-19, you're more likely to experience this but you can experience this with mild COVID-19 illness as well. Unfortunately, at this point, there's nothing unknown that we can do to specifically prevent COVID-19 related hair loss. However, when you talk about treatments for thinning hair, breaking hair, or hair loss, there are many, many things we can do. The first thing is behavior. So. I've called it resting your hair. What does that mean? It means if you're someone who was washing your hair or styling your hair every single day, stop that. <laughs> Lay off the hot styling tools, curling irons, flat irons, hair dryers, pulling of hair. The other thing that has both pros and cons are the use of weaves or hair extensions. There are tracks of clip-in hair extensions, all other types of weaves and hair extensions that can be used um, by women with all different types of hair. I have COVID hair loss, and this is my new best friend. It's a new clip-in ponytail. Other options, hats head scarves. I'm a big fan of those. I just think it's super easy. No one cares how dirty your hair is. No one cares what your hair looks like. The other thing is products. If you look at the ingredients uh, in any hair product, you will see alcohol in almost every single one. So what does that mean? That means you want to try to minimize the use of anything with alcohol in it. It will dry out your hair even more. We don't yet know whether that hair loss that people have experienced with COVID-19 will come back, whether it will correct itself. It is looking promising and encouraging. We still don't know what percentage breakdown um, will regain or regrow their hair after COVID-19. But the bottom line is it takes time. How much time? Anywhere from three to six months up to a year. 